right, we will give more time for people to come and pay and pray and leave their requests before the Lord. If you don't even have any requests, but you just want to kneel down and say, Lord, thank you for my life. You are allowed to do that. So may you be seated, please. Let me go through some formalities. I welcome each one of you, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. All from where you come from, I welcome you. I am so sorry that uh, this dome is very small. So the next time it's for us to build an edifice. I welcome each one of you. I embrace you, I touch you, and I feel you. Welcome those who are coming from Zakaria Park. There is one area which I did not mention. Mutlakeng. Who, who comes from Mutlakeng? Lift up your hands. Let me see. All those from Mutlakeng. They normally come and they come in Kumbi. This is where... Uh, Pastor Masindi had been ministering for the past years and those people have been touched and since then they have never left CTCM. From all over I welcome you. I'm overwhelmed because I know that as you came in the ushers would not sit you with your group where you are coming from. So I take this opportunity to welcome each one of you. I pray that the spirit of resurrection get hold of you and the Lord Jehovah do things that has never been done before in your life. All the pastors in all their formations, the ministers in all their formations, leadership in all its formation of CTCM, I embrace you, I thank God for you. And we thank God that God has given us such a man and a woman as Matruchas, we are very grateful for you. I am building something and I know that the Lord in due time, he will expose it to you and you will see what is it that was in my heart. I'm very grateful for you, Mama Faith, for your loyalty, your faithfulness, and your humility to my command. I'm so very grateful. Today, I do not want that I should arrest you for and detain you for a long time. I am going to give you a short message and I would be ministering to you about extraordinary witnesses who came to testify about the bodily resurrection of Jesus. Extraordinary. So I ask you that wherever you are, you can rise on your feet and let us honor the word of the living God that comes from the book of Matthew chapter 27 verse 64. I want you to take that word. It is a very serious word that is coming into your life. I believe that this word is going to revolutionize you. It will change your life. Amen. So 
I am reading the word of the living God, New King James Version. And uh, if you can put it for those who haven't brought their Bibles to the screen, please. And this is the message that the religious leaders comprising of the chief high priest of the Jewish nation at the time, including the Pharisees who came to Pintus Pilate and said to him, we are not sure that after now Jesus has been killed and Jesus has been now taken off from the cross and now he is laying inside the tomb or lying inside the tomb. What will happen of him? Because when he was still alive, we are told that he made serious comments that you may try to destroy this temple when he was talking about his body. But he says, I know that on the third day I will rise again. Somebody say, I will rise again. Rise again. Say it again, I will rise again. I can tell you whatever they can do to besmatch your name, whatever they can do to kill your name, whatever that they can do to try and destroy you, the spirit of resurrection is coming upon you. You shall rise again. They might have tried to destroy your reputation, your dignity, whatever they have tried to do in your life, whether they were doing in secret places, whatever they were doing to you, you shall rise again. But therefore, coming back now to this message, he says, command therefore that the sepulchre, that means the grave, be made sure, securitize it until the third day, because he said he will rise on the third day. Therefore, securitize it that nobody should come and tamper with the grave. Because they say, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. Now they said, so the last era which is this one, shall not be worse than the first. That means there was the first era as purported by them, as it is claimed by them. And now they are standing today and say, let this last era not go untackled. Lord God, I pray unto you, my Father, that today you release understanding, release knowledge, give your people revelation that their lives Never be the same again. Amen. You may take your seats, please. Now, the chief priests and the Pharisees, they came to raise an issue of security. Security at the graveside where Jesus laid. And they said, we are raising this issue pertinently for those three days. Jesus commented that he shall rise. And he shall rise on the third day. So Pilate spoke about them going to seal the tomb. In other words, when you seal the tomb, you are saying 
Everyone can come, but they can't. They can come this far. When they are seeing the seal, sometimes when there are accidents along the ways of South Africa, you are going to see some yellow or orange ribbons. That becomes a seal. The people who handle issues of accidents say nobody must go beyond the seal. Therefore, he was saying to them, it should be so that you seal the grave. It becomes a crime scene. I'm talking alone here. So, and he went further to say, it must not only be sealed, but he says, be sure that you introduce a guard. And they knew that the guard in Israel will come in areas of hundreds which are centurions. Then they will also come in certain hundreds but they will also come in certain tens. As for this one, it was guards that were coming in fifties. Now, it cannot be that guards when they come in 50s, all of them can sleep at the same time. If somehow someone gets overwhelmed by sleepness, it could be one or two amongst the 50. How can it be, therefore, that when they reported to say, hey, something has happened in the graveyards, and the chief priests and the Pharisees say, don't tell the people that what happened. But just say to the people, we were asleep. It cannot be that 50 people were asleep. All of them were asleep. And listen to what they say. And say, and the disciples of Jesus came and stole the grave. How can they be sleeping but be able to identify who was stealing. When you are sleeping, you can't identify. Therefore, it tells you that they went to conjure lies. You are all quiet when I talk. You are sleeping, but you tell the court and say, I know who stole my perfume. How do you know when you were sleeping? But this is what we can read from the scriptures. That tells us that they told them and they gave them a lot of money. But when the money finished in their hands, they started talking to their neighbors. And say, we were told to tell lies. I'm talking alone here. Why did the chief priests and the Pharisees not take the words of Jesus lightly when he said on the third day and they said we need to securitize, bring security in this area for three days so that we can see what this man was saying is it true. Within that community, they knew that the security at the graveyard is tight. Now, the religious people could not answer the first issue. That's why they say, now on this last issue, we must make sure that everything is tight. It must be watertight. The first issue, is that a virgin bore a child? In other words, a woman that never, ever, ever slept with a man. That was the first issue. Bore a child. And that has become the issue since Jesus Christ was born. 
Because they could not understand. How can it be that it is claimed that Jesus came through a virgin birth? All of us who are under the sound of my voice, you came in this life through intercourse. I don't have time to go there. I tell you, a sperm of a certain man came into the womb of your mother and fertilized everything. That is why you are born. But Jesus, he is an exception. The Old Testament spoke and said a virgin shall bear a child. It is impossible by the makeup of biology for a virgin to bring forth a child. So can I say to you that Jesus was a miracle child? So they said the first issue, we can't vouch on it. It just has happened so the claim is going around. So now, but as for this one then, it looks at this miracle child is going to cause us a problem. So let us make sure that the grave, so that when the body, after the third day, is still in the grave, we can go and say, you see, this was a liar. The church is quiet for me. Something happened on the third day. Something miraculous happened. There were lightnings that took place. There was shaking of the earth. And when they saw certain people they have never seen before in their lifetime wearing such garments that they have never seen before. These people were shining all around. The soldiers and the guards could not stand this thing. So they had to run away. And but as they were running, they saw the stone being rolled away. Violently for that matter. I'm talking alone here. When the stone was raised, and I'm saying violently, these people realized that something happened and they ran away. But at that moment as they were running away, the women were coming. And as they saw, they saw the grave is open, wide open. The seal is broken. Therefore they went and said, what has happened? Because they were coming just to ask if the guards would allow them to come and embalm Jesus Christ. Because he was buried so harshly, hurriedly. Now, can I submit to you without any further ado that the women, when they came in, they saw the grave is empty. They were also worried, what is it that has happened? But along the way, somehow, Jesus appeared to them. And they went to his ankles, they touched his ankles, they began to worship him. I don't have much time to go much theft so deeper and explain what has happened. But when they went, they told the disciples and said, Jesus is risen from the grave. The grave is empty. Then the disciples decided to run now. But now let's talk about the women. You see, the word of the women in the culture of the Jews that time, their word as witnesses was not allowed to be believed. That was the culture of the time. So, we couldn't raise their witness 
as an admission, even in the courts of law. So, can we look somewhere else when the voice of the women was disqualified? Who is there that can arise and give us an extraordinary witness that Jesus is risen from the dead? Because they don't believe the story of the women. So let us look now. Is it true that Jesus rose from the dead? Who is it other than the women that can tell us so that we can arise and believe the witness? In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 7 there is a witness that is being raised by the name of James. Now James is not just an ordinary witness. James is the brother of Jesus. He shared the same womb with Jesus. I would say the second born of Mary. What is extraordinary about him when he brings the witness? James was not initially the follower of Jesus. Like the twelve. If you read carefully in the book of Mark chapter 3 from verse 16 to verse 19 it lists all the disciples of Jesus. And James is not mentioned. That means James was not part of the 12 disciples of Jesus. The James that we are reading about, he is not the son of Mary. He is the son of Matthew. And another James that is there is not the brother of Jesus. He is another James. So in the contingency, of the disciples of Jesus, four of the James that are there are not the father of Jesus. That tells me that James, the brother of Jesus, did not believe in the story of Jesus initially. If we had time, we would go and much interrogate and go much deeper. But because of time, May I submit to you that James, the brother of Jesus, was not part of the initial contingency of disciples of Jesus. When you read in the book of Mark chapter 3 verse 21, the family of Jesus Christ, those who are biologically, who can claim to be attached to the womb of Mary, when Jesus was preaching and giving lectures to the people, they did not associate with his sermons. The Bible says they were found to be outside. Now, outside might mean many things. Geographically, yes, indeed, they were outside. Just like when I'm preaching now, there are some people who are outside. <laughs> How can the entire family be outside? When even the 12 disciples and many people, the Bible says they thronged, they pushed to be inside. But them as a family, they were outside. That tells you that they did not believe in the story of Jesus. Including James, they were outside. It says his brothers and his sisters were outside. Here are the scriptures that I want to give you. We, we don't have time that we can go and read them. But read in the book of Mark chapter 3 verse 31. Read in the book of Mark chapter 6 verse 3. Read in the book of John chapter 7 verse 5. It says... Neither 
did his brethren believe in him? It says they were even offended at him. Therefore, I submit to you that this James we are talking about, whom I'm going to tell you in a short while, that he carries a heavy witness, was not contingency of the disciples of Jesus. Something happened to him that he eventually believed that this is extraordinary person. Jesus is not just a mere man. I believe that this message is going to reach you. That you don't stay outside. That you come inside. When others are outside, you are not going to associate with the outside ones. You will come inside and you will associate. I submit to you that this James, the brother of Jesus, Later, he joined the group. He got insight. After the death of Jesus, this is where I believe that he packed up his clothes. He went to join the disciples of Jesus Christ because it was now dangerous. After Jesus, they had killed him. They were now going to come for him and say, tell us, do you believe the story of your brother? And therefore he did not waste time. He had to pack up his little bags and he went to find where the disciples are and he joined them. Joined them out of fear. There's nothing wrong to join because you fear that hell is coming. Nothing wrong with that. But for them to have accepted him they knew that this is the brother of Jesus. There's nothing that we can do. Whilst he was inside, maybe he was listening with one ear and it was coming to the other ear. But when he overheard that Jesus is no longer in the grave, he sent shivers down his spine to say the same person that used to tell me that on the third day I will rise again. Indeed, it has happened. I deliver to you that when they were behind the closed doors, that's when that the crucified Jesus came through the walls and he showed himself and his brother may have been there. Whilst he showed the rest of the disciples his hands that had got holes. When he showed his sight that has got holes. When they were looking also on his head to see where the thorns have engraved himself, themselves on him. They saw that this is the Jesus. Even when Thomas said, let me feel you to find out that you are the real one. You are the Makoya one. He went to touch his side. He went to touch. And he said, I know that it's him. I believe at that moment, Jesus Christ went to his brother James and said, James, what about you? What about you, James? When you did not believe in the virgin birth, you suspected that your mother has done something extraordinary. What about you, James? I believe that James converted himself right there. When they were holding their meetings with doors closed, being scared of the Jews, when Jesus appeared before the disciples, he showed himself and he gave them the evidence that the grave could not hold him. That's the first witness that I can give to you is the brother of Jesus. 
because after that he became very radical and there is an epistle in the scriptures that is written by him himself in his own handwriting James wrote it and he brought witness that Jesus rose from the grave. I am here to let you know that Jesus Christ is no longer in the grave. He is risen from the grave. That's why Christians who are like us don't go and worship at the grave. Because we know that the grave doesn't contain the master. I run quickly now. The second person that brings a witness here is Peter. I'm bringing extraordinary witnesses. Because if you don't want to believe the mouth of the women, I think you need to turn around. And let us look at these men. Because they will bring a, a heavy witness on you. You know that when Jesus was arrested, Peter became timid. And he also opened his mouth and he denied the Lord Jesus. He even left the group where Jesus was. He went out of the door. He was scared. Because what he saw them doing to Jesus... He felt that this thing is going to come on him in a short while. Because they will keep on asking him and say, are you not part of Jesus' crowd? And therefore he was timid and he denied Jesus Christ three times. Somebody say three times. Say it again three times. He did not see. In the rest of the day, what happened to Jesus? He relied on an eyewitness. The eyewitness says, Peter, I wish you were there to come and see what they have done to your master. During the course of the day, just when the sun was going to go close, 39 stripes. They whipped Jesus. They smashed his back. His back was tattered. Blood oozed out of him. nearly forgot that whoever the Lord is touching that we buy new microphones. These are not ordinary microphones. We buy them from overseas. We need at least about seven of these microphones. May the Lord touch you. May you show your generosity in the work of God. We need to buy extra microphones. 39 on his back, stripes. The eyewitness told him, he says, I saw him. He carried the cross. The cross was even heavy on him. There were times on Via Dolorosa that he fell down. And they picked him up and they say, don't be lazy. Let's go. He saw him. The eyewitness said, and Peter was listening. He said, I saw him. He was mocked by women, even by children sometimes. They were mocking him, blindfolding him, slapping him, and say, tell us who has slept you. Prophesy because you are a prophet. As he was going via Dolorose, they, they plucked off his beard. Jesus alive. Somebody will come, not even using the scissors, but using bare hands, stripping off the beard from his own flesh. And they took turns to do that. He reached Mount Golgotha. 
held by a certain man of Syrene to carry immediately his cross. That man was also forced to do that. Once he reached Mount Golgotha, they said, Hail King. The King. And they took a crown made of thorns. They screwed the crown on his head. It damaged the ligaments that were on his head. Blood oozed out of him. And as they were shouting, fading out in their voices, Oh, hail the king. They stretched him like an animal. Made him lie on the cross. Right on the ground. They took hammers. They started on his hands. They nailed some people not take the agony they looked the other way but others they saw this gruesomeness that was coming from humanity and say we've never seen something like this happening to a fellow human being they drive the nails on his hands blood came out from there and as somebody thought that they finished they went now to his feet they enjoined his feet and they took a no long nail and they grafted the nail and blood came out from him. Honey, I'm telling you that Jesus was in pain. As his body was lying there stretched on the ground, the Roman soldiers lifted the cross and they found a way in which they can hold the, the, the cross on that mountain. And Jesus hung there like an animal. He cried out, Hello! Hello! The last strength that was in Jesus came out in those words. He could not bear the agony anymore. He delivered his soul to God Almighty. And they saw his head drop and they could tell that the man has died. There was no doctor that could come and certify whether he still has a pulse or nothing. But the Roman soldier took the spear that he was carrying and he went to the last rib. He punched through last rib on the left that touched even his heart. And the Roman soldier moved the spear. That's why the Bible says blood and water gushed out of his system. And that was certified that Jesus is dead. This is the eyewitness in the message to Peter. When Peter received the news, on the third day, Because when they told him about how Jesus died, he ascertained that it's over. Whatever Jesus was saying, it's impossible for him to come back. It's finished. But on early Sunday morning, the women that he's used, he used to fellowship with came to tell him, that Peter, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen. The grave could not hold him. He is risen. 
The word of the Lord says Peter and John on receiving the news they rushed to the graveside and they even came inside the grave inside the tomb Peter could only see around and he saw that indeed the clothes that bounded Jesus were left intact they were notifying him that there was a body inside of here. He saw this thing he could not understand. He left the grave confused and said, what is it that has happened? And the women brought the message. They said, Jesus says uh, he must meet you in Galilee. Go to Galilee because that's where you are going to see him. I am talking to someone. The Lord Jehovah is risen. Jesus Christ is alive. They went back to Galilee as they were instructed. And after many days, when they are not seeing anything, when they are not hearing anything, Peter decided to say, guys, I'm going back to my old trade. I am a fisherman. He says, who wants to go with me? Let us go back fishing. They fished for the whole night. It became so worse that they could not catch anything. They did not understand that we used to do this thing. We used to be successful. For the whole night, nothing has happened. A stranger showed up at the shore and asked them for the results. Did you catch anything? And they said, we toiled for the whole night, nothing. It tells me that without Jesus, whatever you are trying to do, you are going to produce nothing in your results. Jesus directed them to the right hand side of the boat and the Bible says they caught so much so much fish I am here to let you know that Peter at the shore saw him he saw Jesus Jesus restored the faith of Peter not only restoring his faith he also gave him the commission Peter saw Jesus physically. He could not understand the witness that he heard when he saw Jesus. And can I deliver to you that within the 40 days before Jesus ascended, it was now common for them to see Jesus appearing to them. Twelve of the disciples had already seen him including Thomas who doubted when he heard about the witness how Jesus died he saw him he touched him he saw his wounds he saw everywhere I believe that he even saw the back of Jesus how it was tattered and Thomas raised the words he says the Lord God my God the Lord God, my God. Can it be someone this morning rising and say, The Lord God, my God. The Lord God, my God. You are my God. He confirmed, if you may be seated, I'm finishing. After Thomas has made his physical examination, can I submit to you that there are others within that 40 days that saw Jesus physically. The Bible talks about 500 brethren. Now, it, 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 it says 500. When it says brethren, it gives you the gender. That means males. Therefore, I submit to you that just like when Jesus 
transformed two fish and five loaves and five, five, five thousand men ate. It was a gender. That means before he ascended to the throne, within those 40 days, more than five, more than 500 men and women and children saw Jesus. That's why Paul says, as I'm writing 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says, I have gone to ask witnesses. There are people who are still alive during his time amongst the 500 who have borne witness that they have seen Jesus now alive. 20, 29 years after the crucifixion, when Paul wrote the first book of Corinthians, Peter becomes a reliable witness. If you don't believe the words that came from the women, ask Peter himself. Peter will tell you and say, I saw him at the shores of Galilee. We inspected him. We saw that this is the risen Christ. He is no longer in the grave. He is arose from the grave. Let me tell you, when he is risen from the grave, there is no matter in your life that he cannot handle. There are no issues in your life that he cannot solve. There are no sicknesses that he cannot heal. In my conclusion, I'm only giving you three witnesses. The last witness in my submission is Paul the Apostle. The one that persecuted the Christians. So that tells you that this guy will not come and give you a positive message about Jesus. Because he went to torment. He even killed all those who were declaring that Jesus in his deity, Jesus is holy. Jesus is the son of God. When he thought that they were releasing profanity. Those people came and they said Jesus died. But they gave the message that he rose again. He went to Damascus. Carrying all letters of authority. To go and persecute them. And bring them back to Jerusalem. Those who were professing the lordship of Jesus. He wanted to arrest them and bring them to the chief priest in Jerusalem. He is the last witness that I'm giving to you. Because he is the one that even witnessed somebody that died, somebody that was killed, somebody that was stoned. He was holding the clothes of the people that were stoning Stephanus. So, Paul knew the other side. But then Paul, on his way to Damascus, he was struck down by lightning. It's not the ordinary lightning that me and you are used to. The lightning that comes when clouds are colliding. I'm talking about the light that came from heaven. It came to show itself in the life of Paul. And Paul heard a voice. And the voice said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul, when he looked up, he saw Jesus. The one that he thought that he was dead. The one that he thought that he will never come back to life. He saw him standing before him. And not only him, Paul and his accompaniment, they also heard the voice. Why do you persecute me? He saw the glory of God. It came like lightning. When he saw the glory of the Lord, he heard the voice. 
He couldn't stand the glory of the Lord. He went blind. He was blind. For three days, he could not eat. Three days, as he was blind, they took him to a certain place that was owned by a gentleman called Judah. When he was there, Ananias received a report through the Holy Spirit and said, go to a place, a street called Straight. You shall see a man there. Pray for that man. Let the eyes of the man be open. God told him that the man is Saul that persecuted the Christian, but is now a changed man. Ananias walked inside and he saw the man and he laid his hands on him that he should receive his sight. Scales. In other words, it was now so struck it was now like stones the scales fell off his eyes he received his sight gentlemen and ladies this is a man that did not believe in the resurrection of Jesus he is the one now that preaches the resurrection in 1st Corinthians chapter 15 he says he is risen. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the witnesses that are coming to your life today. They are telling you that Jesus is no longer in the grave. Jesus is risen from the grave. Arrest right now this message. Take it to your life right now. These are the three witnesses who did not believe in Jesus. Some of them betrayed him. But now, they are the ones who are preaching the message. Two things that I give to you. You go to Israel even today. The grave of Jesus is empty. The second thing I give to you is these witnesses that he is risen child of God he is risen he is more powerful than the witches there is no witch doctor there is no sangoma that can stand the power of resurrection resurrection has come upon us We are going back to our homes today. I am saying let us go back with this message that he is risen. In other words, he is in charge. He is in control now. He rules over the universe. There is nothing impossible with him. I give you this message today. Somebody say, Lord, I receive it. Arise on your feet right now and receive the spirit of resurrection. Somebody lift up your voice and begin to pray and say, Lord, I receive resurrection in my life. Begin to pray right now. I say begin to pray right now. Tate kima yaka kawena utswa nezi dito. Oh, say it again. Tate.
Garcia. service on the resurrection day we are now giving you the qualities of the body of Jesus let it come upon you may this blood of Jesus do wonders for you I pray that the body of Jesus brings strength that what your family could not acquire what your family could not achieve before Right now as you go back home, go with the spirit that says Jesus is risen. Let the body make you car choir. Let the body bring healing into your life. The life that you used not to enjoy as a family, may that life now come upon you. May it come into your life. I present to you today the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is no longer hanging on the cross, but that body is alive. It has been shown to many people. May now Jesus show his power and his strength in your life. Those who were afraid of witchcraft, they were running away and running helter and skelter, running to and fro. Today as they take the bread, may their faith be solidified. In the name of Jesus, let the power of witchcraft be defeated. Let the power of failure be defeated. I give you this bread now. I say take and eat in the name of Jesus. Distribute the bread now. Jesus, oh, give it to me now. have offered prayer you can now take that bread and eat the force that is in the blood of Jesus the force that is in the body of Jesus let it permeate right now and touch every aspect of your life in Jesus name in the same manner I give you the cup right now I say drink this is now the blood 
of Jesus that comes into your life. The blood carries a voice. May the blood of Jesus speak on your behalf. May the blood of Jesus rebuke everything that wants to destroy your life. May the blood of Jesus arise right now and rebuke every rigmarole in your family. Right now, as you take this cup and drink, may there be a rebuke that comes from the throne of God. In Jesus' name. one thing that I just need to clear you know I'm very humble before the Lord if you don't know ask Jesus he will tell you I've never commanded Jesus even when they can say I am the general oh apostle general I don't command Jesus who am I to command Jesus at the blast of his nostrils my life can be over just by him blasting his nose so, I was just wanted to correct the brother because he's just released from Kosimampur. You can't command the Lord Jesus. We ask the Lord Jesus. And we can ask in a demand, but not in commanding. Amen. Is that okay? 
Look at your neighbor and say you can ask. And he will do what you are asking him to do. Say yeah. Say yeah again. Let the church say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Ah. Can we do it better than that now and say it again? Let the church say. seated for a while. Those who are still going, continuing to drink and they're continuing to eat, uh, you, you will do that. But let us give now the ministers to make some conclusive remarks. Hallelujah! Indeed, we serve a living God.